If you remember, one of the questions that we had on our beginning of the semester survey was your assessment of your driving in relation to other people. I also asked a question on what your sex was. So now, would you be wondering, does a person's sex have any connection to their assessment of their own driving? Another way to look at it is what percentage of males say they are much better than average as compared to what percentage of females? When you ran cross-tabulation analyses, you were able to answer the first question. Our table shows that 43% of the males in our sample assess their driving skills as much better than average as compared to only 18% of women. But what about the mean? Since this is gathering interval or scale level data, we can run means on these questions. Another way to compare the data between males and females is to run means. We can compare the means and determine that amongst males, the mean was 4.24 on a five point scale as compared to 3.61 for females. What you're doing there is a means comparison, and that's what we'll focus on today, specifically t-tests and ANOVAs. The same assumptions apply that you have knowledge of setting up an SPSS file and you know which statistical tests to use based upon the variable type and the hypotheses that you're testing. These are some of the samples that were in the previous survey at the beginning of the semester that you may have completed, and we'll use some of these questions in our examples today. Why would you want to run means comparisons? Means comparisons look for statistically significant differences between two variables. When at least one of those variables is gathering scale or interval level or ratio level data. When you were running cross tabulation tables, you were comparing questions where both of the variables were gathering nominal or categorical level data. So again, you need to be concerned about what the independent variables are and the dependent variables. And there's two methods that you can use, the independent t-test and the ANOVA. I just need to draw attention to the fact that there are some caveats, some things that you may need to do before you run some of these tests. But we're not going to focus on those today. Running t-tests, you would use these when the independent variable is gathering nominal or categorical level data and only has two variables, such as in the example we talked about earlier. Sex has only two levels in this variable, male and female. Your dependent variable, however, has to gather interval or scale or ratio level data. It is a continuous variable, such as in an agreement scale of a one to four scale. Think about it as the dependent variable has to be one that you can run means on. Simple procedure, analyze, compare means, independent samples, t-tests. There are a couple of things that you need to do once you get in there, but we'll talk about those in just a moment. These are the dialog boxes that you'll see when you're running a t-test. Note that the dependent variable goes under test variables and the independent variable goes in the grouping variables. You'll also have to identify the levels in the grouping variable that you want. And you'll notice that here, male is the first level and female is the second level. So let's do it. We're talking about whether a person's sex could make a difference in their assessment of their own driving. So sex would be the independent variable and assessment of driving is the dependent variable. Here we are in our data file. We'll do analyze, compare means, independent samples t-test. Now we'll scroll down. Driving is our test variable because it's our dependent variable and sex is our grouping variable. It's our independent variable. Define groups. Category one is male and category two is female. Continue. OK. And here is our independent samples t-test. You can see that the mean for males is 4.24 and the mean for females is 3.61. So now we know what the different means are for the two groups. The question is, are those statistically significant? For that, we come over here in the second table and under significance two tailed, you look here to determine whether there's anything less than 0.05. And as you can see, yes, there is a statistically significant difference. So we can say that men are more likely to rate their driving as better than average than women are. When you're running ANOVAs, the assumptions are that you still have an independent variable that is gathering nominal or categorical data, only now it is not limited to only two levels. 
The better way to think about it is you're looking at an independent variable gathering categorical or nominal level data with three or more levels, such as assessment of math skills here has five levels in it. It could just as easily be employment status, employed full-time, employed part-time, or not employed. Now the dependent variable just as in the t-test has to be continuous. You could run a mean on this one to determine what the concern for this course is on a one to five scale. Simple procedure, analyze, compare means, one-way ANOVA. And here when you identify the variables, the dependent variable goes under the dependent list with the independent variable as the factor. And you may want to run some post hoc tests such as two key, and oftentimes it helps to choose the descriptives option. So this is what you will see when you run the ANOVA. You can see where the dependent variable goes under dependent list. The factor is what the independent variable is. You'll be able to choose post hoc and choose two key, and then under options, you'll choose descriptives. So let's do it. Could a person's perception of their math skills make a difference in their concern for success in this class? So again, the independent variable is perception of math skills, and the dependent variable is concern for success in this class. Here we are in our data set. We'll do analyze, compare means, one-way ANOVA. Now we said that our dependent variable was the concern in this class, the likelihood of succeeding in this class. And that might be affected by their perception of their math skills. So the dependent and the independent variables. Post hoc, choose two key, continue. And then under options, we want to choose descriptives. Continue, OK. And here it is. So here's your one-way ANOVA table, the descriptives, and it tells you the mean for the people who said much worse on their variable for concern with the class. So those people who assess themselves as much worse than most people with their math skills ended up having higher means than those people who assess themselves as better than average. So now we look here at the significance, and the significance is greater than 0.05. So that's telling you that this is not a significant difference. This is likely due to the fact that we only have 49 people in the sample, a small sample size. So again, if it were significant, is the significance between the worse and the much worse, or the much worse and the average, or the much worse and the better, and conversely, worse versus average, or worse versus better? And that's where the two keys test comes in. So you can come here, and again, it identifies significance here, and it compares much worse against worse. And you can see it's not statistically significant. If it were, this number would be less than 0.05. So this compares much worse against worse, much worse against average, much worse against better. This question has much worse against worse. Yep, that's the same. And what a surprise, the significance is the same as well. So this does the comparison amongst the different groups. Processing time. When would you choose to run t-tests versus ANOVAs to compare means? If significant differences do exist in an ANOVA table, where would you look to identify where those differences are? What are the steps to running a t-test? That would be analyze, compare means, independent samples t-tests, and then you'd identify the variables and define the groups. And then how about ANOVAs? That would be analyze, compare means, one-way ANOVA. And then you would also need to identify the variables, choose two key for post hoc, and then options descriptives. Now you have a better idea of how to run mean comparisons. That should make it easier for you to analyze your data.